Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to the malaika that I am making a khalifa, a successor in the earth. And their response was, And the malaika, they responded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an inquiry saying, are you going to make in this earth someone who is going to cause corruption and spread corruption and shed or spill blood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his simple response was, Qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. He said, I know that which you do not know. And so we understand from this scenario that before the creation of the human being, it was already known and it was understood and it was decreed that there was going to be corruption and there was going to be bloodshed. And we understand from this as well what is the magnitude of bloodshed because the expression generalizes corruption and it specifies bloodshed from all other forms of corruption. And so linguistically, this tells us of the severity of the act of unjust bloodshed. And despite this, not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not negate the inquiry of the malaika. Rather, he still saw fit that even though there was going to be bloodshed and corruption, he still saw fit to bring it all into existence. And so one may ask, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approve of? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condone the spilling of blood and corruption? And we say, no, absolutely not. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said, That Allah declared that he does not approve of the least amount of injustice for the entire world. And he forbade injustice upon himself and he forbade injustice upon the human being. And he expressed his value of the, the human life and the human soul when he said, من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, because of that, and he's referring to the very first murder that ever happened in the earth when Qabil killed his brother Habil, the two sons of Adam. And he says, because of that, later on we wrote upon Bani Israel that whomsoever takes a life for other than murder or, or some form of corruption in the earth that will require the penalty of death, then it is as if they have taken the life of all humanity. And whoever saves a single life, it is as if they have saved the life of all of humanity. And so we learn from this that one murder, one life taken unjustly in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered a massacre. One murder in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered a genocide. And perhaps the lineage of a, a, an entire lineage is cut off when you murder a single individual. And we learn from this that every soul in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is priceless. The only way that one soul can equal all souls is if that soul is valued at infinity. Infinity plus infinity plus infinity equals infinity. And so by this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us his appraisal of the human soul, that the human soul, it is priceless. And from this, we also learn that human life, it can never be reduced to numbers. It can never be reduced to, quote unquote, collateral damage. That Palestinian Muslims, the Muslims of Gaza, are not numbers. The Uyghur Muslims, they are not numbers. The Indian Muslims, the Sudanese Muslims, they can never be reduced to numbers. Their life is more worthy of living or as worthy of living as an American citizen, as a Ukrainian citizen, as an Israeli citizen. 
So when we reduce souls to numbers, we are going against the divine metric set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in short, no, this does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not value the human soul or that he condones cor corruption and murder. Rather, this means that despite the corruption and despite the spilling of blood, there is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw worthy. There was a greater wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw that would play out in the midst of this bloodshed and in the midst of this corruption. Something that in fact requires the presence of bloodshed and corruption and that is those, those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by their very own choice without any resistance, even in the face of aggression and abuse, people trying to inhibit them and prevent them from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and despite all of that, they will find no excuse not to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of that they will attain ranks that they never would have been able to attain if not for the presence of that corruption and that bloodshed. And Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he said in his tafsir explaining why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being despite the possibility of corruption. He said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wished to take from this, this, this species of mankind, the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous. And certainly some levels of righteousness and truthfulness and certain levels of martyrdom, they cannot occur except in the presence of corruption and bloodshed. And then he goes on to say the same imam in his tafsir, he says, فَمَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا لِحِكْمَةً That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he never created anything except for wisdom. وَمَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا لِحِكْمَةٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has never commanded anything, not small or not big, except for a wisdom. And so we understand why Allah's response was simple. إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know, I have knowledge of that which you know not. Meaning that, any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is the angel, whether it is the jinn, whether it is humankind, we are never fully capable of seeing the entire picture. We are only being able to see a small portion of the picture and we should not make our full judgments and develop doubts and uncertainties based on the small portion of the picture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to see. Because when you only see a small portion of the picture, you cannot determine whether it is a masterpiece or not. You cannot determine whether it is something good or not. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's teaching the malaika and he's teaching us as well to trust the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we understand or not, whether we are able to see the full picture or not. And to do as the malaika they ultimately did in a situation that they did not clearly understand. In a situation where the perfect wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests in the form of bloodshed and corruption. They still proclaim the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qalu subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-aneemun hakeem. And this is a lesson for us all. They didn't understand yet, they still proclaimed the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praised him. And they recognized their own limitations saying, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. And then they recognized the perfect knowledge and the perfect wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, innaka anta al-alimul hakeem. And if we were to step back, we would understand that this is the life of the believer affirming the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single situation. What will you say? What will you think? 
What will you believe in times of ease or in times of difficulty and distress? It's Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said, فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ What is your thoughts? What is your assumption with the Lord of all that exists? And how well we have internalized the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is manifest when we face difficult circumstances. When the moment becomes so intense, the reality, it will come out. You know, when we confess, La ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of our devotion and our love and our obedience and our reverence in the perfect sense except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an absolute statement. This statement is unconditional. It cannot be restricted to time. It cannot be restricted to place. And it cannot be restricted to circumstance. La ilaha illallah in every single moment. Whether we're having the best day of our life or the worst day of our life. La ilaha illallah. Whether we are happy or we are sad. Whether it is a glorious day outside. Whether we are rich or we are poor. We are healthy or we are sick. La ilaha illallah. In the best of circumstances and in the worst of circumstances. La ilaha illallah. It is an absolute statement and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has created us he made us a a weak creation and then he subjected us to difficulty so that through that difficulty we would proclaim the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of everything out there and everything internally that is urging us not to worship and proclaim the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you've been watching what I've been watching, you would see that it is this type of faith and affirmation that has amazed so many non-Muslims. So many non-Muslims are amazed by the faith and the affirmation of the people of Gaza and the Palestinian people. And they are starting to inquire about Islam. They have lost everything, as one person said, and still they are saying, Alhamdulillah. Still they are saying, Alhamdulillah. Literally, the buildings are collapsing from around them, and they have lost family members, countless relatives in the dozens. And they're still saying, what? Alhamdulillah. They're still praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surrounded by devastation and destruction. And this is just like the hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. An authentic hadith recorded in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, he said, قال الله عز وجل إن المؤمن عندي بمنزلة كل خير He said, Allah the mighty and majestic said that the believer with me, his, his status is always good. The status of the believer with me is always good. يحمدني وأنا أنزع نفسه من بين جنبيه He said that the believer praises me. Subhanallah. The believer praises me while I am removing the soul from his body. He is embracing death with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his tongue. And this is what we're seeing from the people of Gaza. And this is what is amazing even non-Muslims. And they're starting to get their copies of the Quran and to read further into Islam. One young lady said, that the Palestinians are doing everything that was described of Job in the Bible. Ayyub alayhi salam. And another said that I've been shocked to my core at the faith Muslims have. What is happening in Palestine has opened my eyes to the beauty of Islam. Mothers, at the moment when they're receiving the news of the death of one of their child, the first thing that leaves their lips is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. How do you explain that? People who have not tasted imams for the iman, iman for themselves, they can barely comprehend. How can someone in a moment so devastating automatically submit and humble themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And again, they are starting to ask about Islam. And inshallah, after the break, I will explain, inshallah, some of these points. 
أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو التواب الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله So what are the ingredients? What are the ingredients that has the ability to anchor a person in the most devastating situation? The first of those ingredients is knowledge-based faith. Faith, iman that is based in knowledge, certainty that is rooted in understanding, not a superficial cultural, theoretical belief, but real, authentic iman. And Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِطْ بِهِ خُبْرًا And Surah Kaf, he said, and how can you persevere? How can you endure about that which you have no knowledge? Meaning that without knowledge, without experience, then it would be nearly impossible for a person to stand such a devastating test. And Allah, he, always, he also said, That what we read in the Qur'an from the accounts of the messengers, by that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives strength and stability to our hearts. And so when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's all wise, and He's all knowing, and He is ever so just, and He is merciful and kind, and He is good, when you know that there is a heaven and a hell and th this life is merely a test, then that makes it easy for us to endure and to persevere through difficult times. And the second point is that in order to develop this type of stability, you have to have properly placed hopes and expectations. Ha keeping the dunya in the proper context. And obviously, this is also something that is influenced by knowledge. And I close as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّن قَبْلِ أَن نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ He says that no calamity occurs in the earth, nor in your own selves except that it is already in a book with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before he allows it to come into existence, even before he makes it happen, and that is something that is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set it up like that? Why did he then tell us about it? The next verse says, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ this is the stability that comes with knowledge. He says, so that you would not despair, so that you would not lose hope about what has escaped you. The things that you lose, the things that you misplace, the things that you miss out on. Because you are firmly rooted in Iman that is based in knowledge, you're not going to despair on those things. Because your heart is set on the hereafter, the eternal abode, the eternal reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're not going to overreact about what you gain and what you lose of this dunya. And this is what the non-Muslims, they are now asking about. And so it is a time for us in this situation, as many of us have already been doing, but to increase our da'wah. Extend the invitations. Start to have conversations with those in your circles and your neighbors, because many of them, they are ready, whether we realize it or not, to listen and hear the perspective of the Muslims. They're witnessing the injustices spreading through social media, and they're starting to inquire about Islam. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide so many by our hands in this devastating time. Say, Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the burden from our brothers and sisters all over the globe, and especially our brothers and sisters witnessing and facing genocide in Gaza, in Palestine. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all and keep us all safe and our families under the shade and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protect us in this life and the next from all of the calamities and the afflictions.